when Mendel was performing experiments with pea plants, he noticed something quite interesting. He noticed that in a population of plants, plants that produced purple flowers always produced seeds that had a brown seed coat and always had a colored axil. Axil is the space right here between the leaf and the stem and almost always the color was reddish. In contrast, he noticed that in the same population, plants that had white flowers produced seeds with a colorless seed coat and also had colorless axils. He attributed this observation to the fact that these traits were all controlled by a single gene. Now keep in mind that this was before Morgan performed his experiments on fruit flies. So Mendel didn't know about linkage or recombination. So he attributed his observation to the fact that these were all traits controlled by a single gene and he was not wrong. This is an example of pleiotropy and pleiotropy, pleo means many and tropy means effects. This is a Greek word which describes a phenomenon where there is a single gene that controls multiple traits or multiple characteristics, seemingly unrelated characteristics as well. If you take a look at these traits here, there is no connection between these traits. This is the flower color trait, this is the seed color trait and this is the axle color trait. So these traits are seemingly unrelated but somehow controlled by the expression of a single gene. Now you may be thinking, how do we know that this is a single gene and not just you know two or three genes located very close to each other on the chromosome that they are almost always inherited together. With what we know about linkage and recombination, how can we be sure that this is an effect of pleiotropy and not linked genes? Let's do a small experiment. So say there are three traits and two scenarios. One scenario is the pleiotropy scenario where the traits are controlled by a single gene. Another scenario is that they are all controlled by individual genes but they are all linked genes. So the possibility of them being inherited together is always higher than the possibility of them being inherited separately. If you want to recap about linkage and recombination, go check out our video on linkage and recombination. So let's say that there is a mutation in one of the genes and assuming that it is a linked gene condition, let's assume that there is a mutation in the gene that codes for trait A. Now if these traits were to be inherited together, if these genes were to be inherited together, a mutation in A is not going to affect the expression of other two traits B and C. If we are to assume that this is for flower color and B is for seed coat color and C is for axle color, if there is a mutation in the gene that codes for the flower color, that's not going to affect the expression of the seed coat color or the axle color. The plant is still going to have brownish seed coat and reddish axis. But in contrast, if it were to be controlled by a single gene, a mutation in that gene is going to affect all three traits. The flower color might not be purple, the seed coat color might not be brown, something like that. And what the scientists observed was exactly that. A mutation in this gene was affecting all those other traits. So from that they concluded that this single gene was controlling the expression of multiple traits and that is what is pleiotropy. Pleiotropy exists a lot in humans and other animals as well and not just in plants. A very common example of pleiotropy in humans is phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria is a genetic disorder that is caused by a mutation in the gene that codes for phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now phenylalanine if you remember is an amino acid. In the body it needs to be broken down to tyrosine which can then be metabolized and excreted from the body. But this gene if it contains a mutation produces an inefficient phenylalanine hydroxylase which is the enzyme needed to convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. So in the absence of this enzyme or in low levels of this enzyme due to a mutation in the gene, phenylalanine begins to accumulate in the body. Now the accumulation of phenylalanine doesn't just cause one effect, it's going to cause a variety of effects like the nervous system, it causes conditions like intellectual disabilities, seizures, it's going to affect the integumentary system, the skin. It's going to cause pigmentation of the skin. It's going to cause a musty odor to be emitted from the skin. 
it's going to affect the bones and it's going to affect the ligaments as well so that's why people with phenylketonuria often usually have a small head and they also exhibit some growth abnormalities so you see here this is a single gene the gene that codes for phenylalanine hydroxylase it controls a variety of effects we can see that because a mutation in this gene doesn't cause just one but it causes a multitude of effects there are other examples of pleiotropy as well marfan syndrome is a connective tissue disorder it affects the genes involved in producing connective tissues like bones and cartilage because of that people with marfan syndrome are abnormally tall have abnormally thin and curved bones because it affects the connective tissues it makes it difficult for the body to hold together the blood vessels the heart and the lungs making them very prone to prolapse marfan syndrome also causes a discoloration in the lens because the lens are also held up with the help of connective tissues that affects the lens and the vision as well sickle cell disease is caused by abnormal rbc's in the gene that codes for the hemoglobin protein if there is a mutation it causes the rbc's to take up an abnormal sickle shape because of this there is abnormal rbc's it that is how it affects the circulatory system these rbc's are more prone to be clumped up together which increases the risk of blood clots because of the blood clots there is less delivery of oxygen to tissues which means that a lot of tissues could die because of lack of oxygen that can cause a lot of other problems as well so this is how it affects the circulatory system and the other systems as well another example is albinism a condition that affects the production of melanin melanin is the pigment or the protein that gives the skin its color and the absence of melanin causes the person to be extremely white in color they have a white skin and hair as well apart from affecting the integumentary system albinism causes effects in the sensory system as well it causes the discoloration of the iris because the color of our eyes is also controlled by the amount of melanin in our body apart from that it also causes visual defects like nystagmus and other visual problems and this is how in albinism a mutation in a single gene causes a variety of effects in the body and that's why it is an example of pleiotropy